look at that car. Probably shouldn't even be filming them. Feels like a standard Tuesday, it's podcast record night, but Hellison is not coming over, so I am going to go get sushi. Also, uh, the Dodgers are in the World Series, so this is not just an ordinary Tuesday. Go Dodgers! late and it is entirely my fault upset stomach so I have uh, been in the restroom for the better part of an hour and I'm not gonna give you any visuals but it wasn't great so I'm gonna go see how this goes because I got to sit there for a little over an hour and I want to make sure I can make it for the entire episode <laughs> Okay, so we didn't end up recording the podcast tonight. Bummer. But it looks like we will be recording tomorrow night. Um, unfortunately, and uh, sorry to Matt and Sean, uh, my stomach and my bowels would not cooperate tonight. And I just couldn't make it for an hour. So uh, fortunately, I'm finally able to actually lay down feeling a little better. So I'm just going to drink some water and chill for a bit. Well, since we weren't able to record the podcast tonight, um, I figured instead of uh, showing video of the podcast and what all was going to happen with that, instead I could do a little uh, Q&A. Because since I started making these videos, um, you know, big shout out to everyone that's been watching. And, you know, I've been out and people have been, you know, asking me some questions and wanted to know a little bit about, you know, kind of why I started the videos and, and what you know, inspires me and, and different questions like that. So I figured, you know, why not take a minute here and uh, answer some of those questions in one of the videos. So the first question I wanted to answer, and I get asked this a lot at my job, um, and that is, what exactly is your podcast? So, you know, I tell my coworkers and, and you know, even when I interviewed for the job, uh, it was very well known that I do a podcast called Indecisive by Choice. So for anybody that doesn't know, um, that's a podcast that I've been doing once a week for a little over four years. So been very dedicated to it. And that podcast was actually started uh, with uh, Michael Tacone, Matt Hellison, Sean Gasson, and myself. So when you date back the early episodes, uh, Sean comes in, I think around episode 20-ish, somewhere in there. And uh, it's been fun to do the show. So, you know, the progress that was maintained throughout um, was this dedication to make sure that we released a new podcast every week on time to the best of our ability. So have we lived up to that 100%? No. And I mean, tonight's kind of a perfect example of how you know things break down and you have to you know move your record times and try your best to get it done but it's been a really fun learning experience doing the show um, you learn you know what works and what doesn't like when we first started we were very analytical particularly around sports we used to spend our time uh, taking whatever maybe Monday Night Football or one of the big uh, basketball matchups of the week and, and kind of breaking it down and the narrative for the show shifted when we had on our guest, I believe on episode seven, and uh, that was with Drew Knox, and he came on and started telling stories from college, and uh, we were having discussions about bigger issues, and it really changed the game for the show, and we became a much more story-driven, um, kind of topical podcast versus analytical and since then, you know, uh, with Sean coming in, of course, we have a huge history together. Matt and I went to college together, and uh, Mikey had worked with Sean, and we all had, you know, kind of these memories together. Mikey has since left the show. Uh, now we, we talk a lot about 
um, in particular craft beer, some sports, not a lot of sports anymore. Um, we do an annual fantasy football league and we also, uh, we talk a lot about like whatever's topical. So of course, you know, in the last year, the, the presidential election, Donald Trump, some of the things like that. We do a weekly list, um, which can range anywhere from movie topics to something silly, like what, you know, what epic animals would you want as pets? I don't know. And uh, we've brought on guests and, and a whole range of different things. But for me, the, the real crux of the show is this opportunity to get together with two of my friends, you know, Matt and Sean, each week and just kind of shoot the shit, you know, have a good time and uh, enjoy their company. Because as you get older, you know, I used to go down to San Diego all the time to visit Sean, probably once a month. And, you know, it, it, it you lose that a little bit over time and so it's still nice to be able to hang out when when we can once a week and you know Sean you'll probably see in one of the videos he's actually you know gonna be up here this weekend but um, you know when you get to hang out once a week with your friends how, how can you beat that so question number two uh, why did I start a YouTube channel that's probably the question I've been asked the most um, in you know the last two weeks to a month is is you know why why are you starting this why now well, you know what do you want to do with it so I think one of the big things to point out is like I have enjoyed making movies since I was a kid like for you know my mom and dad they're gonna remember that uh, we made Michael Jackson music videos in my basement we used to make jackass videos we used to make short films and you know, little series. I used to make videos with my Star Wars action figures. It's something that I've enjoyed doing in my free time, you know, is a passion that I have, and I went to college for that. And it's something that, you know, has extended into some of my hobbies. I film weddings, and uh, of course, I do social media and marketing for uh, companies, so I create videos there as well. And that actually kind of spurred the YouTube channel creation. The company I'm at now, uh, I started creating weekday videos. Um, every day I was at the office kind of uh, detailing what was happening there and what um, I was up to. And it was interesting um, because after I started making those videos, I realized that this was something that not only I, I truly enjoyed doing, but I realized I could translate to uh, my life, you know, and I think it, it really boils down to two things when it comes to, you know, what do I, what do, why did I create a YouTube channel? The first is permission. I feel like what YouTube does is it gives the power back to creators. You know, when I was coming up and what you're taught in college is that you need permission to make movies. Someone is going to give you a budget. Somebody is going to approve somebody, you know, there's always somebody higher up than you that kind of has to give the okay on the whole, like, all right, we're going to do this. And YouTube empowers people. And I think, you know, one of the things that really stood out to me was I had these lists of stories, fantasy stories, sitcoms, things that I'd worked on through the years that... You know, I didn't want to wait for permission to start telling the stories. And I decided to kind of take that into my own hands and just say, you know what? I'm going to start telling stories and just see where it goes. And the number two reason I created a YouTube channel was because I realized that I needed to kind of take my destiny into my own hands. Um, I wanted to start creating things on my own and, uh, you know, really challenge myself to do more so for instance you know even you know tomorrow morning and, and in the mornings I started getting up at 4 30 I realized that you know what I have some time to do and work on whatever my passion is and this is something that you know easily gets you know sw swept under the rug when you're you know you're out partying or you have stuff going on and I really wanted to kind of take control and say, you know what, I'm gonna go do something. I wanna take action and do something. Question number three, uh, who inspires me? Or at least who inspired me to kind of uh, 
start filming these videos in this style and everything. So of course, for anybody that's a YouTuber or watches YouTube, um, you could probably tell a little bit through the style of my videos that uh, I'm totally inspired by Casey Neistat. So if you haven't seen his videos, you just YouTube search, you know, his name and his vlog is absolutely incredible. Um, he does some really cool cinematography, cinema verte, like he, he's very, very, um, you know, aware of the camera in his videos and it's kind of fun. There's this unique aspect to it um, and unique, not just to him, but like to the YouTube vlogging community as well. He's just, his cinematography is out of this world. But he's very, very inspiring if you actually watch his content. He often shares his opinion on, you know, creative uh, philosophies and, you know, what people, you know, can do to further their, you know, creative passions. And he, uh, you know, pair that with his awesome blog and it's very, very inspiring. So I want to say, hey, thank you, Casey. Um, it's actually, you know, my style is you know, not even really my style. It, it emulates his style as I kind of find my own voice. Uh, that's where I decided to start. So, uh, yeah, he's super inspirational for me. And then there's also, um, if you go back to anybody that remembers, like back in the early 2000s, um, the CKY or the CKY2K videos. So that goes all the way back to like Bam Margera and Jackass. And this real kind of handheld, I think back then it might have even, even been Sony Handycams, and this real handheld style of filmmaking where these guys, a bunch of skateboarders, ended up creating videos of their journeys. And instead of having a production crew follow them around and create these really high-end productions, uh, they would bring their own camcorders and just hold them in their hand. Now, of course, they were doing a bunch of silly things and just having fun playing pranks and getting some, you know, sticking their head out of a, you know, moving van and doing stuff like that. But it had this really authentic, really personal feel to it, which I've always admired. Even though, of course, you know, you pair it with that, uh, you know, jackassery. Um, but I, I always loved that style. And it's something that's always kind of stuck with me. And after, you know, starting to watch YouTube videos and uh, get more and more involved in the, the, you know, community and seeing different, uh, people doing stuff there. I was like, man, this is something I think, I think I could do. Question number four. And this got asked to me this weekend, uh, three times from people who had seen my videos. And that was, what do you film your videos on? So, uh, I hope, I hope this doesn't actually disappoint anyone, but I film and edit all my videos on my iPhone 6s so it's actually been uh, quite a pleasure um, I own uh, you know a Canon 7d uh, thanks to Ralph Munguia so thank you very much and it's something that I've used for a lot of different productions from short films to wedding videos to music videos and you know, it extends for a while different projects that I've worked on through the years. And the 7D's quality is, you know, kind of unmatched by a lot of other consumer cameras, at least, you know, up until maybe the last two years. And the 7D is still kicking around. So it's a, it's a beautiful camera. Love it. But I found that, you know, the, the real power of being able to do a vlog or, you know, a daily video with the limited amount of time that I have is really empowered by my iPhone. Um, not only is the camera great on both sides, so, you know, I can take uh, beautiful time lapses or, or hold the camera out and shoot something that I see. I can also turn it around with the pretty powerful, uh, you know, front-facing selfie camera and also record myself talk. Now, what makes this a lot more unique than, than using, you know, the higher-end cameras for me is the time that it saves. So with a Canon, I would have to go upload my footage to the computer, physically sit at my computer. I don't have a laptop or a MacBook, so I would have to be at my desktop in my room and actually use editing software there to create the vlogs and then, you know, uh, render and uh, upload the files to YouTube. Well, it, I can work from anywhere on my iPhone. I use iMovie, so shout out Apple. And... Uh, I'm literally able to create a lot of the things I want much quicker without all that transfer, upload, 
download, re-upload, uh, that whole process, if I just, you know, shoot this video right now, I can sit down and edit it 10 times faster. So until I think I'm able to free up more time to dedicate to this project and any other uh, shows or videos I come up with for the channel, uh, I'm probably going to stick with the iPhone or whatever phone I have because it simply, you know, provides the quick quickest and most, you know, efficient, essential tools that I need to create everything. So, I mean, like I said, I use the iPhone, I use iMovie. Um, I use the Google uh, Creator, the audio library for royalty-free music. For anybody that doesn't know how to do time lapses, you can either download the app Hyperlapse from Instagram, or you can actually use the time lapse feature in your camera. It's pretty cool. They have slow mo too. Um, and I went and got you know a bunch of other gear to accompany my iPhone. It's all built around cameras. So I have one of the uh, Gorilla Pods again, another you know inspiration from Casey Neistat. I have a selfie stick, I have a tripod, I have uh, you know a couple different pieces of equipment that help me film these videos. All right, and question number five. This will be the last one. So uh, a, a few people have asked me. Um, Steph uh, gets a lot of mentions in my videos, but she hasn't really been in the videos. So people have asked me, you know, where's Steph at? How come she's not in the videos? And the answer simply is that if somebody, um, I guess up to this point, she hasn't really wanted to be in the videos. So, you know, kind of speaking on her behalf here, but um, she hasn't really wanted to be in them, so I don't put her in them. Um, I'm sure there'll come a time where we'll go on a trip or do something and she'll, she will end up in them. Uh, you know, there's all kinds of adventures that we go on and I'm, you know, definitely bringing my camera where I go. But, you know, for, for anybody, just so you know, um, you know, I, I if somebody either A, requests not to be in the videos, I won't put anybody in because I don't want anyone to be uncomfortable. And I don't want to bring my camera into much more personal moments other than for like the traditional social media that we all do. So, you know, my videos, the vlog is about my journey to bring this YouTube channel and these YouTube shows to life. So it follows me on that journey. And of course, I'm gonna cross paths with my friends like Matt on the podcast or Sean. And, you know, people will end up in the videos, but, you know, if I go to a birthday dinner or someone invites me into their home, I'm not going to just bust out my camera and start filming everybody. Um, like I said, I mean, I'll still take pictures just like I would have before for social media. But other than that, you know, unless somebody requests it, like if I showed up and somebody's like, oh man, you know, let's put this party in the video or do something, then I'd consider it. But... Otherwise, you know, uh, all my friends, family, uh, you guys, you know, don't really have to worry about being uncomfortable if I'm around or anything. And if you ever are, just let me know and I'll reassure you or let you know if I'm filming, but reassure you that, you know, I can just edit it out. So that kind of uh, wraps up the Q&A. Um, you know, it was kind of fun, actually, to kind of explain a little bit more about, you know, why I chose to do some of this stuff. I guess that'll actually wrap up the video this week because uh, I'm going to bed. <laughs> so good night, everybody, and uh, thank you for tuning in.